the northern Armenian province of Lori, I found a home far from city life, where a gracious host family helped me connect with their village and with culture, history, nature, and with a little more of myself as I continued on my Armenian summer journey. Welcome back to my Armenian summer journey, the series about my life in Armenia during the summer of 2021. I had just spent a week in the capital city of Yerevan and I never wanted to leave. The sights, the people, the nightlife, the food, it was a place of endless possibilities. But then I received an invitation that was about to change the trajectory of the experience I imagined having in Armenia. I got in touch with Vladimir Grigorian, a tour guide and friend of my Armenian language instructor in the US. He was about to take his wife, his mother-in-law, and his daughters up to his village home, and he invited me to join them at a place called the Sech, which I had never heard of before, and at a home that was still under construction. So I had a decision to make, stay and discover more of the wonders of Yerevan, or accept this invitation to this unknown destination in the countryside. Something inside me said, take this opportunity, and so I decided to go. The next day, I went down from the city center to meet near the family's Yerevan home. Then we took off through the outskirts of the capital and into the countryside on my first road trip across Armenia. took us through the Armenian alphabet monument and further up ahead through Raya Taza, an ethnic Kurdish Yazidi village founded by fellow survivors of Ottoman persecution during World War I. After crossing into the Lori region, we went through Spitak, a town that was destroyed by a major earthquake in 1988 and has gradually begun to thrive again. We bypassed Vanazor, Armenia's third largest city, then started our final approach as Vladimir told me more about our destination. In addition to many historical sites, Kurdish Desert is known as the birthplace of a very famous and talented poet. Throughout our trip, I spoke with his daughter, Mari, a student and talented artist who had a lot in common with me. We discussed popular culture, literature, Japanese anime, and our respective filmmaking experiences. She was incredibly helpful in filming much of my footage here. <laughs> Vladimir's five-year-old twins grew increasingly excited. They were ready to play and to see Jackie the family dog. Three hours and 145 kilometers later, we arrived. Next, Vladimir will introduce the place himself. Now you are at the Serre de Wolf Rural Adventure Center. Uh, the idea is not just a hotel, but to create conditions so tourists can stay more than three days. There are three ways to make it, create uh, interests within the property of 8,500 square meters, within the village of the Serg, and most importantly, in nearby beautiful area, landscape, mountains, gorges, and forest. This building you see was a Soviet time school dormitory where teachers and also students from the nearby villages where they had no schools, they were staying here. After the collapse of Soviet Union, this building was abandoned for about 30 years. It's 
much more difficult to rebuild the existing building than building a new one, but slowly, step by step, we are going to make it. As I toured the property, one thing in particular caught my attention. Vladimir's collection of Armenian carpets. I remembered seeing a report about Armenian carpets being transported from a museum in the war zone to Yerevan for protection from destruction by the Azerbaijan military, who were destroying all traces of Armenian heritage in their path. So I felt fortunate to gaze upon and learn about these cultural artifacts some of which had come from that disputed Nagorno-Karabakh region in the Republic of Artsakh. Just here, see, there is one... Uh, there are a lot of symbols, actually. Uh, uh, it, it's vice versa, but uh, there is one with a tail, one head. This is another symbol, sunburst. Uh, this is also an interesting piece. Meanwhile, on this one, Again, different symbols. This is the, uh, like uh, Latin. In Armenia, it's the same. Also, this the symbol of uh, prosperity. Uh, this, if you look carefully, they look like a bee, mm -hmm. like hard-working men. Uh -huh. And most likely, it was devoted to twins. Again, you see the bee yeah. and the flower. In an overflow. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say twins, double, double head. Mm -hmm. I keep seeing double head. I see. Also, over 100 years yeah. from Karabakh. That afternoon, we all washed up and prepared for our first of many evening dinners under the stars. <laughs> Vladimir's mother-in-law wanted to know more about what my motivation was oh, okay. to come to Armenia. I shared how my experience with the culture through a former girlfriend of Armenian descent and the emotional impact of the recent war sparked my desire to step foot on this land and had now led me to be in their company. Vladimir shared his background as well. He was a young engineer working at a generator plant when the Soviet Union ceased to exist. All of a sudden, his plant closed Jobs ended, basic utilities like electricity were gone, and overnight, Armenia and most of the former USSR regressed from being part of a world superpower into third world countries in economic turmoil. Despite the hardships, Vladimir would go on to different ventures and try different avenues of learning, meeting his wife Rosanna along the way, a woman who shared his interest in nature and love for traveling. Getting late, so Rosanna and Mari would soon put the children to bed, while Vladimir and I continued talking over a few glasses of Armenian cognac. Okay. Welcome to Armenia. Thanks. Over the next few weeks, I filmed all over and put together a little vlog introduction to the village. Now, let's go back so I can personally welcome you in. I'm here in Desek, in the Lori province of Armenia, and have found that it's a wonderful place at the crossroads of nature, culture, and history. And I think it's a hidden gem that many Armenians and non-Armenians need to come and discover. I'm entering now from the main road that goes through these villages, and I'll turn the camera around in a second so you can see the entry to Desek. And I'll also go up this new glamping facility that will give you a nice view. You can see the village faintly on the background there as I make my way up to the glamping site here. Once you're walking through it, it feels like a very small, intimate village, but there's actually a sizable population here, which means a lot of people to talk to or to try to talk to. In my case, my Armenian is still uh, um, is Lab Chen, that's the word. There's still a 
part of it under construction. Right up the road, you can get started hiking right away. I've just made it to the top so we can take a look at the Seh from far above. Much of the town over there straddles a cliff, which is another hiking area that has amazing views on top of taking you through historic sites including old uh, ruins from Armenian churches and what you see at the top over there is the cemetery of the Sech. Next let's look at the Sech a little more in depth. Making it down here. We're back here on the main road and uh, we'll take a look over and you can see some of the first few buildings when you enter the Sech. Just walk through the main road into the center of town. These are a couple of the stores where the family I'm staying with has come to shop. I've just turned the camera around so we can walk into the town square. Now this little park aside from these friendly cows, has statues that represent the characters from famous Armenian writer and poet Hovhannis Tumanian's stories. This is Hovhannis Tumanian's hometown, and his home museum is on display just beyond this main square. It's been one of my favorite parts of the Sech, and I look forward to showing it to you in a future video. For now, let's walk through this town square, and I'll end this by checking out the visitor center. Now this is newly built, so I haven't seen it open during my stay in the town, but it does represent the different stages of development that I see here in this Sech. We have the visitor center recently completed, and next to it, we have a building that's a private development in the prominent part of the center. It's under construction, going at a pretty slow pace from what I've seen here, so these different stages of development are currently going on with the hope that the Sech can be a, a prosperous place for the villagers to live in and for those of us who appreciate nature to enjoy. That's my little tour of the entrance to the Sech and the town square. Most days I tended to Vladimir's garden in the mornings learning to work the land and leaving my mark on Armenian territory in blood and sweat. Rosanna and the girls would then take me beyond the village, across the landscape and into fragments of Armenia's past. One day we hiked down to the Karsnit Mankats Vank Monastery, solitary ruins that lay along the gorge. Monastery, over the plains and into the forest on the other side of the gorge. physical descent through the wilderness into this isolated former spiritual center was a serene and awe-inspiring experience.
Okay. Throughout our hikes, Rosanna taught me the historical context behind the places that we visited. The local prince, the nobles would come for the masses. The nobles are in the church and the regular people are in this area, which is called Gavit. And all the Gavit part was added to the church later in 12th century. This was already post-kingdom time when the feudals were on uh, um, control. And so this was a new thing added to the church. After and, that? Yes, and this is the sun watch. Mm -hmm. We have the uh, Armenian alphabet here. So Armenians were using the letters for the numbers as well. Uh, so the shade would come. So here uh -huh. there would be um, some stick. And the shade would just uh, show you the time. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> this is the midday. Um, and uh, the sunset is already the end of the day. In addition to the history here, I was surprised to see so much forest in a country I had imagined as largely arid and mountainous. And this was actually part of Rosanna and Vladimir's inspiration for starting their business. During one of their trips to the country of Namibia in Africa, they had an epiphany. Most of the diversity of nature that they found across different countries actually existed within the borders of Armenia itself. And they had the idea to change their focus toward helping share Armenia's natural beauty as well as the history of the Armenian people with the world. They transformed their passion into an adventure tourism company known as Discover Armenia or DA Tours. Nowadays, Rosanna is active with the original tourism business while Vladimir focuses on the complex in Desek and developing tourism in this northern Lori region of Armenia. Throughout their years in business, one of the fondest memories they have was meeting Anthony Bourdain and helping him produce an episode of Parts Unknown, which took place in Armenia. They even got Rosanna's brother, Arsen Badalian, to help on the production. Coincidentally, Arsen came to visit us with his family during one of the weekends that I was in Desek. It was the perfect time to take the girls and their cousins out for a picnic by the river a few kilometers down in the nearby village of Debet. Picnicking, doing a little bit of lavash. As we played around, I noticed a person standing over the bridge nearby. So I decided to go talk to him and test my Armenian conversation skills. But it's just Ja? Ha. Um. Chem hayeren hasanumen. Ah. Mikic hosumen, right? Ah, angleren hosumek. Che, che. Ha, yes kyur. Um. Che, yes, ein der dessert. Dessert. Ha, ha. Bite si ah kedum Kedumem koaf avelio. Aha. Ainte kanuna. Ha. Vartan. Vartan. Yes, yes anuna. No, imanuna Luis. America ita. Shaturaka. Kisher menemu. Ha, cem cem has kanum kuneres. Im un antan antanik ha sa antanik yes yes kyur bare ha ha aha 
Yes, uh, Asa. I was far worse than I thought I'd be, but luckily Arsene came to help me communicate with our friend Vartan. When we got back, one of the twins insisted on giving me a tour of the campsite behind Vladimir's home. I think she's definitely going to be the next tour guide in this family. Spending part of my adventures here with the twins made me more conscious of the higher capacity to learn quickly and to enjoy life in the moment that children naturally possess. And I was grateful that every member of the family had enriched my experience of Armenia in their own unique way. Okay. Let me try. continually surprised me with improving English as we spent our days together. Clearly, I was the slower learner, so they insisted on some language lessons for me before ending the night. Inesun. 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 Inesun yot, inesun in, karasun karasun As my days in the Sech drew to a close, Vladimir had a surprise for me. He had arranged for us to have dinner with two of the village elders. They allowed me to record the resulting conversation, and I will share the wisdom that they passed on in my next episode of My Armenian Summer Journey. For now, I thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Uh huh.